Today's program is sponsored by Siemens Digital Industry Software. Welcome to the premier broadcast of Semiconductor 360 TV. I'm Yuval Luger. Joining me today is Shuka Zonovitsky from Semi Israel. He's a semiconductor news and networking guru with 20 years industry experience. Whether your company's expertise is design, production, equipment, or services, if semiconductors are the heart of your business, we've got the news you need. We've got an exciting program lined up for you. I'll be sharing some of the hottest industry headlines from this week. AI semiconductor market value is estimated to grow this year to $59 billion. For our In the Spotlight feature, Shuka will host Anoop Saha from Siemens Digital Industry Software. Anoop will talk about the future of the AI semiconductor industry with valuable insights into its future growth. For the past 18 months, working from home has been an issue for many of us. For our pop-up investigation, we'll take a look at the work from home phenomena that's filling up front pages and blog posts everywhere. Stick with us to the end to hear what your colleagues around the world have to say about working from home. Renaissance and Sentient are collaborating on hardware design that will enable low-power, voice-controlled operation of Vision AI systems. These developments will enable voice-triggered activation to perform tasks like object recognition and facial recognition, and will power devices like your groceries checkout machines, security cameras, and even the smart cleaning robots in your home. On the Asian front, Taiwanese President Tsai has announced that Taiwan hopes to create an international semiconductor talent pool with nations such as Japan and the US, where Taiwanese semiconductor companies have a presence. The Semiconductor Industry Association, the SIA, has announced that the sales were $133.6 billion during the second quarter of 2021, with significant growth in all regions. SIA forecasts that demand for semiconductors will continue to rise substantially in the long term as we strive for a smarter, greener, more productive, and better connected world. Moving to acquisitions, chipmaker giant Qualcomm has made a $4.6 billion bid for Swedish auto part maker Vioneer. This move will significantly strengthen Qualcomm's position in the automotive market, where Qualcomm currently offers its Snapdragon Ride chipsets. And in case you missed last week's headlines, we are ending our news flash with a reminder that Elon Musk has a startup called Neuralink and has raised more than $360 million in funding to develop brain chips for humans. Neuralink investors include PayPal co-founder Peter Thiel's Founders Fund, OpenAI CEO Sam Altman, Google Ventures, and Dubai-based V Capital. Brain-computer interfaces are hopeful developments for people who have suffered brain injuries. Neuroscience technologies using semiconductors already help paralyzed people walk and the blind to see. And on that hopeful note, we complete this week's news flash and turn to Shuka and Anoop Saha for our In the Spotlight interview. Shuka, the desk is yours. Thank you, Yuval. Anoop Saha has worked in the NDA industry for 20 years, and today is the Senior Manager for Strategy and Business Development at Siemens EDA. Anoop is responsible for the ecosystem, growth and strategy for the company Catapult High-Level Synthesis Tool, focusing on automotive, 5G and AI vertical markets. He is an expert in machine learning, especially on edge AI and low-power devices. Thank you, Anoop, for joining us today. Let's start with a warm-up question. It seems like everyone's talking about AI. In which market segment do you see the most potential for growth and impact? Ah, that's a great question. If you look at the evolution of AI in last 10 years, the most significant impact of AI had been in industries where there was a lot of data available and the downside or risk of false positives or false negatives are not too high. So be it social media, 
e-commerce recommendation engine and so on and on and on i believe the next wave of ai disruption will be in mission critical industries be it financial services manufacturing aerospace and defense and two of the biggest one will be autonomous driving and healthcare anup your 20 year career in this industry has undoubtedly given you a unique perspective on the role of semiconductors in ai and machine learning can you share it with us yes ai algorithm had been there for a long long time right? but it would require a supercomputer to run those algorithms what changed with semiconductors is purely following moore's law chip performance are doubling every couple of years so what would require a supercomputer what would be in the supercomputer that chip would that performance would be available in a data center in let's say 10 years so this 1000x improvement every decade is what enabled ai but that's not enough right now compute requirements for large training algorithms double every 4 months so we need to do something that is even makes the compute performance and energy efficiency even faster than moore's law and i am glad to see so much innovation happening in both the software and the hardware side of ai you've been with siemens for a while what's their approach to helping customers develop ai chips ah, i'm so glad you asked that question i mean this is very close to my heart so if you look at as i mentioned that this when you're designing an ai chip you need to improve the time to market as well as ensure that the chip you are designing are functions as you intended it to be so in siemens we are trying to address those through our advanced solutions for ai one of those is high level synthesis that the abstraction layer of hardware design is similar to software now that you can write a c program and it can automatically generate a performance and power optimized hardware that helps people do both hardware software code design as well as significantly improve the time to market of their chip in addition the other siemens tool or emulation platform will help you measure those metrics that users or end consumer will care about with real application and real benchmarks so you will have those data way before tape out so that things can be tweaked and changed very rapidly in a sense we are enabling an agile development flow for hardware just as it has been in software for a long long time anup i remember when we met to prepare for our interview you mentioned that it's probably the best time ever to be part of the semiconductor industry you brought up some impressive numbers for the semiconductor ai market to conclude our interview today can you share them with our viewers Oh, absolutely. I have been in this industry for two decades now and things had never been better. It's like the golden era of semiconductors now. Why is that? Look at the venture funding. For last four years, the average venture investment in semiconductors has been almost three and a half billion dollars every year. So there's so many startups that are coming up. 314 startups started in last five years purely on AI. If you look at not just if you look at the overall industry it's not just the startups that are getting interesting funding there is lot of system companies like facebook google amazon microsoft all of them are doing their own chips so if you are a chip developer or a semiconductor company it's it's a gold rush for semiconductor right now this is such a great news anup You know it's been a real pleasure having you on our first broadcast of Semiconductor 360 TV and just before we say goodbye do you have any tips to share with our viewers I'm glad that you asked this question and I have been working with startups in this industry for a while now and based on my observation I have three primary suggestions one define your met- metrics as early as possible and measure it at every cycle of the design phase and verification phase second think of the end application while you are designing the chip right it's it's some called application specific integrated circuit for a reason 
and that application has to be kept in mind while you're doing the architectural exploration and hardware software partitioning and lastly and most importantly customers are not interested in buying a chip they are interested in buying a solution so whoever provides an end to end end solution is going to win be it their own solution or they have partners in the ecosystems it's up to the company but end to end solution that solves specific problems will have a huge advantage over other solutions wow anup this is like super tips thank you very much for sharing your knowledge with us and thank you for joining us i really look forward to meeting you again and hearing about more fascinating developments in the ai world back to you yuval thank you anup and shuka working from home has changed our work life balance let's talk about it since the onset of the covid-19 pandemic Working from home has become the go-to policy for many companies as an alternative to shutting down during extended quarantines, demanding health protocols, and the homeschooling. Flexjobs.com has declared that permanent remote work is the future of work, pandemic or not. According to Flexjobs, companies switching to part-time and full-time remote work include some giants like Capital One Bank and Facebook. Recognized collateral benefits include losing the commute and the suit, quieter workspaces, and more flexible hours. For many of us, it sounds like a dream, but not every employee is happy working from home. Ask the parent who homeschools their kids while working full time, or the team member struggling with slow internet, and you might hear that they long to return to the office. As powered, part of our pop-up investigation into the widespread work from home phenomena, we asked several of our colleagues from India, Israel, and the US how working from home is working for them. And this is what they told us. For me, one of working from home main advantages is the option for taking some time off screen. I use it for walking in the vicinity and thinking about interesting challenges. So we've been at Flex Logics, we've been uh, working remotely very effectively through the whole, you know, first, second and, and third wave of the uh, coronavirus pandemic, uh, effectively getting projects. Sometimes it feels that we are all going to develop an ADHD. You have noises of children, TV, dishwasher on the one hand, phone calls, Zoom meetings, work emails on the other hand. And there is no real separation between personal life and work. Seeing my son grow, you know, from crawling to walking, speaking, and as another important thing is avoiding Bangalore traffic. And what about you? We would love to hear your opinions and experiences of working from home. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Share your stories on Semiconductor 360's LinkedIn page. Our link can be found below. And that concludes today's broadcast. Thank you for joining us. We'll hope you'll be back for more Semiconductor 360 TV. We invite you to join our LinkedIn community and mailing list, where we will announce our next programs and share industry news you want to know about. And don't forget, semiconductors are the heartbeat of our world.